spring practices. Jaron, what impact will that have on BYU spring football? Jaron Hall, the incumbent backup, his dad said uh, he's a football player first and will not miss any spring football. So that's news to me. Jaron Hall is going to be a better quarterback than he would have been. Jaron Hall will be the quarterback of the spring. Zach Wilson will be the quarterback of the fall. Uh, how impressed are you with uh, Zach Wilson now knowing that he was hurt all year? That was a legendary performance even before we knew about the injury. Now throw in that mitigating factor. We'll never forget about this. I thought his throwing motion was awesome, and he required shoulder surgery. Zach Wilson signed with BYU football last year. What's the biggest need for BYU football this year on signing day tomorrow? Running back, no doubt. Load up. Need them. Multiple. Big physical running backs. It's BYU Sports Nation in a minute presented by the BYU Store. I'll take small fast guys, too. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Watching BYU TV on KBYU DT Provo Salt Lake City. Coming up on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, the Cougars make the WCC turn in second place as we preview games against Portland and Pacific with the head coach, Captain Luke Worthington, and strength coach Eric Short as BYU Basketball with Dave Rose starts now. next four games will be really important for us and how we're going to finish this this thing. Sheer, top of the key, three, yeah! Josh Sheer, hard net! Top of the key to Nick for three. He got it again! Nick, the Baxter, he got it again! This is fun basketball. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Live from Studio C in Provo, Utah, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside Studio C at the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo. We take you inside Cougar Hoops every week here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We invite you to join the conversation as well and submit questions for tonight's Q&A segments using the hashtag Rose Show on Twitter and the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram accounts. Joined on set by BYU head coach Dave Rose, whose team is coming off a one-on-one week that has the Cougars. Dave uh, sitting uh, just behind Gonzaga right now in the league standings as you head the back half of a conference campaign. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, interesting uh, interesting two games. Uh, I, I, th I think our guys were ready to play. I, th I, th I thought we had a good plan uh, on Thursday night against Gonzaga, but uh, they, they, they were really good that night. And, uh, you know, we, we got off to kind of a rough start offensively. I thought defensively we were pretty good, but uh, missed some, some shots I think that we would normally make. And, um, and then we just... It was just hard to catch them. They were, you know, that's what it felt like the whole night. Like we were trying to, uh, you know, get them from behind. And and we, we cut the thing to five, I think, in, in the first half a little bit. And then we, we got down big going into halftime. And then we came back um, a little bit in the second half. And then they hit a couple big shots. But it's kind of what they do. I mean, they're they're playing really well like right now. I, I saw that in the latest, a couple of the latest uh bracketology things that they've moved to a number one seed for the NCAA tournament. So we're all chasing them. We got, uh, you know, eight teams in the league that are, you know, trying to, you know, find a way in the second half to, to knock them off. But uh, hopefully we'll, we'll play a little bit better. We'll have a better plan and we'll be able to manage the game a little bit better the next time we play them because that's what it's going to take. Well, you saw firsthand uh, why they do lead the league and why they are top five nationally, why they are now a one seed. Let's look back at uh, last week's first game. It was BYU and Gonzaga at the Marriott Center. Uh, first sequence of the game saw McKay uh, stealing and almost scoring, ended up getting a free yeah, throw out of it. Yeah, and you know, we, we got a wide open layup there on the, on the rebound, but the ref decided to call one of his three fouls on the night, <laughs> and uh, we ended up going to the free throw line. But there's... Uh, TJ making a nice play at the rim. And th th these are some of the things that we really got to fix. I and mean, that was a made basket, and they came right back 
and, and scored in transition, which is really uncharacteristic of our team, but it does tell you how fast these guys play. They play, uh, they really move the ball at the floor on makes and misses. There's a nice little fall away by Yo when he got a little bit of space, but like you see, you can see the score here. We're, 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 we're playing from behind and we're just kind of chasing these guys. And the two big guys were really good, Hachimura and, uh, and you know, Tilly, but Clark, you know, those two guys I think scored 50 points in the paint against us. So that, that'll be something we really got to kind of sure up. Nick, you know, we hit a couple threes in this game for us. and uh, but, but you can tell, I mean, there's confusion there in transition and we don't, you know, pick up our guy and he, he uh, you know, dribbles right to the basket. And, and those are defensive breakdowns that, uh, you know, we, we, we need to uh, really sure up. And things that at home that we really haven't done, we, 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 we've been a really good home team and, and to give up 93 points at home is, is uncharacteristic for this group. And so um, now you got, the, you got the loss, you're beat, and you got to come back on Friday and put a plan together to, and deal with that disappointment. And there's one thing I've learned over the years that when you have a really good team, okay, and your guys believe in themselves and they believe in each other, and you get beat like that, and then you got to play that quickly, it takes some real character to turn around and actually find yourself the next night. And um, we've been beat that bad at home one other time, but the season was over and we didn't play again. And and we had you know had to turn this thing around and play 48 hours later. And so, a real challenge for our guys. And uh, and uh, I, I was proud of the way we we finished the weekend with the big win against LMU. We saw a lot of uh, Rui Hachimura in that clip, and he ended up being the WCC Player of the Week for a third time already this season. Yeah, I and mean, he could have been the National Player of the Week too with the numbers that he put together. He had a heck of a game against San Diego the next night. Um, up or at 32 home, where San Diego yeah. played them really well and Zags weren't weren't shooting the ball you know really well and they so they went to him in the post constantly for the entire game and um, and you know they rode him to a, a big another big win let's take a look at that uh, Saturday game it was a late night game Thursday uh, turning into the uh, Saturday evening game against uh, LMU a vastly improved uh, LMU team at the Marriott Center. they came in at 16 and 6 on the year Dave and 4 and 4 in league yeah, the most game, the most uh, wins that Mike has had in, in his five years there, and he, we still, you know, just starting the month of February. So it's a good team. They beat Georgetown earlier in the year. Uh, they beat UNLV at UNLV. But we, uh, you know, the, the way they were guarding Yo, bringing Gav's man to him and double team and closed off the space for Yoli, but really opened up opportunities for Gav, and I was excited about our ability to find him and then him to be able to finish. Here's a, a, a nice three. I think that was the only three we hit in the first half uh, at, at uh, to, you know, to get started there. And now we're here in the second half and we got things rolling here. Gavs, you know, hits a big three. I think it's the first of his. Yeah, he hadn't made one yet this yeah, year. Yeah, the first of his career. He makes them every day. But here's a nice, you know, uh, fast break where Nick's got He's got uh, TJ up ahead of him and kind of fakes to him and then, you know, feels Gab coming on the lane and get, got it to him. And there's TJ. Pretty nifty from TJ yeah, there. Nice little play there because of, of how they were guarding those ball screens. And then there's, you know, a good pass to Gab in the corner. And some nights, you know, the basket looks really big and the ball feels really small and it just goes in. And this was a, a, a really great second half performance by our team. And, uh, Won our first game of the year without uh, Yo or TJ scoring double figures. Yep. And uh, so, you know, Nick had 17 and, and Gav had a career high 25 points and uh, 10 rebounds. And in his first start, I think that's might be as good as, as, as a, a, a anybody's done here. I think Shot Bradley in his first start yep. had 23 and 14 or something like that. But uh, that's a, a great uh, a game for Gav. And, and uh, I think it's the start of something really big. I, I, I do believe that. He has really learned how to play with this group of guys and this team and how, uh, you know, where the open spots are and, and the attention that they're paying to Yoli is, is really a, a benefit for Gav. And his, I mean, his shooting percentage is, is, uh, is pretty good because most of them are right at the basket. And, right. And I think he has more dunks than he has just normal, you know, made field goals. So uh, hopefully we can keep, we can keep doing this. This game, uh, you know, against Portland will be similar. They'll attack us, you know, and, they, and, and so they'll leave the bigs and they'll attack us and hopefully Gav can float around behind that backboard and find space. 
and we can find them. Yeah, Gavin's dunk rate is really high. The game stats, by the way, presented by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. More about Gavin in terms of timing. Uh, you gave him his first start, and this all came in his first start. And really, we've talked about uh, the word with him this year, Coach Rose, kind of being a, a progression yeah. as he gets ready. And, and you know, we've, uh, we've got him in, in a couple times where we were, you know, uh, feeling like maybe he was ready to start and, and then you know, kind of made a decision to stay with the group that we had. It was interesting when I talked to Luke about starting Gav, I said, okay, let's, I think he's ready. I think it's time for him and let's just, uh, um, you know, just see how he does and hopefully he handles it well. And when we were having that conversation, I didn't think any of us, either one of us thought he'd go 25 and 10, but that's, uh, uh, it was a night that we needed it and it was kind of what was the way it was being played and he really responded well for us. As big a night as it was for Gav, it was big in a different way for, for Nick Emery. We've seen him do this before uh, from three, but it had been a little while. He went five for five from the arc, scored 17, a season high for him. And as he always does, Coach, brings you great energy both ends of the floor. And that was what we were looking for at halftime, is, is the decision was made to start him in the second half just based on uh, the fact that we needed more guys playing with more energy. And, you know, you, you, a guy to go five for five in a game uh, and not miss a three, okay, um, so, you know, sometimes a guy missed the first three and then maybe hit five threes in a row. But to go five for five and not miss a three, there's only been two other guys who have done that at BYU. Nate Call went six for six and didn't miss. And Brock Zilstra went six for six and didn't miss. And now you got a Nick at five for five without a miss. So it's, it was a pretty special night for him. And, uh, again, that was something that we needed. The only two guys who hit threes that night were Nick and yeah, Gav. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in a... Playing a team that's, you know, got 16 wins and has won a couple of really big games on the road out of their building, um, you know, that, that was – and they had a great defensive plan. I mean, this is a team that held Gonzaga to 73 points. And so uh, – you at, at Gonzaga. So you know that it's a team that will scout you and really, um, you know, prepare for you. And for those two guys to have that kind of game, I think it gives our entire team and our entire roster real – energy to believe that what I believe. I believe our best basketball is ahead of us. I don't think we've played our best basketball yet and that we're going to find it. And I think this helps uh, everybody have that, that belief. As we head down the stretch in league, uh, you'll play 16 conference games. You've played nine right now. And so you are on the back half. And there we see BYU in solo second uh, behind Gonzaga right now. It does get pretty tight uh, behind the Cougs. But uh, right now, Dave, you're in a good spot. Yeah, and when you look at the schedule coming forward, I mean, this, this every week is big, but, but this week especially a real challenge because we're going on the road on a Thursday night, um, and then we, we travel back to a home game, uh, and, and it, those split weekends are tough. We haven't had a, a split weekend yet. Usually you just deal with, um, um, you know, your preparation and maybe fatigue, rest. How you, how you going to manage that when you play two home games? On the road, you have to deal with, with the, the, that travel uh, added in, and that's what we'll have to deal with. You know, game at Portland, then you have to manage the fatigue, the preparation, and the travel back to the Marriott Center. So, uh, big weekend for us, and obviously two teams that are down in the standings, but have had moments of just brilliance during the year, and so it's important for us to, to play well and to try and find a way to win two games this week. All right, that is our first segment of tonight's show. A reminder that your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play -play is with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan on BYU Sports Nation. Join them tomorrow for a two-hour show for a BYU football signing day. So it's a Sports Nation special tomorrow, noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Coming up after the break, we're looking ahead to the week ahead with those games at Portland and home to Pacific. And BYU basketball with Dave Rose continues. Call it a path, or a way through. It can be arrow straight, or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. 
Don't miss the BYU St. Mary's women's basketball game live Thursday at 1 Eastern, 11 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar sports. Gather around for family movie nights on BYU TV. You know the story of Cinderella, but do you know what really happened? In this refreshing take on an old classic, uncover aspects behind your favorite princess in Ever After, a Cinderella story. Grab the popcorn and hit the lights for family movie nights all this month on BYU TV. This is the house right here. How cute is that house? Krieger and Rob Strasberg are on a mission to redesign and refurbish these families' homes and impact the community one family at a time. We're so happy for you guys. Witness the transformation on Welcome Home. On the next Roller to Brace. What do we do? We've never had anyone do this before. Ah, we're moving, Jerrica. I want a new Toyota. I want a what? Everyone is hearing strange noises. Did you shower this week? I don't know. You're the first people I've met from my mother's side. A close connection takes Michael to new heights. And Precious is one step closer to finding her father. I hope I get to meet him. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Here's our broadcast schedule for the week. Uh, BYU heading up to the 503 to play Portland on Thursday. It's late Eastern time. Not as late in Portland, 8 o'clock there, but 11 back east on ESPN2 and BYU Radio. Our radio pregame one hour before tip, by the way. Then Saturday, a more uh, moderately timed start of uh, 7 o'clock Mountain, 9 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio for the Cougars and the Tigers. So. Coach Rose, it's a couple of uh, rematches for you, a couple of teams you've already seen once this year, and you'll start things off at the Trial Center here in two nights. You know, we played really well, came out the first 10 minutes against Portland and, and jumped on them, and we, we guarded them well. We got a couple here, the, you know, big steal by McKay with the big layup. This was a really important game for us. We'd just come off that five-game road trip, you know, that lasted a month, and uh, we got up big, but then they cut the lead, you know, to three at one time. We hit a three to, get, to get, be up six at halftime. And the second half had a big half and we were able to, to win the game. But uh, this is a team that has re three really good scoring guards. And, and uh, JoJo Walker and Shaver and McSwiggin. And those are the three guys that uh, we really have to, uh, you know, keep down. I mean, if, if he, all three of them had 30-point games in their career. And so... Uh, that'll be our challenge. They play really well up there. They play a little bit faster up there, shoot the ball with a lot of confidence. We usually get a good crowd yeah. in there, which kind of sometimes turns <laughs> them on because they've played in front of maybe smaller crowds. And then, uh, so our guys, we, 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 we got to be ready for this, and, and hopefully our guys will be dialed in. You know, they're playing well. They took Santa Clara to overtime right. on the road last Saturday night. So uh, looking forward to a real challenge. BYU has won seven of nine up in uh, Portland all time. Uh, once things wrap up late Thursday night, you're going to charter right back and do a quick turnaround again, as you mentioned. But you'll get back and, and get a chance to get a full uh, day of fri a full Friday of work in before you take on Pacific. This is a game you played up uh, in Stockton, and, and again a big lead team that came back on you, and you made some big shots late, including this one. And it seems like forever ago when we played those guys. It was League opener, a long time. And uh, this is the last possession here. She did a great job of just challenging Gallant and making a miss that shot. It was a three-point win for us. So, um, you know, that, that and Pacific is a, they're one of the toughest defensive teams. They're like LMU, and they're, they're just going to scout you, and then they're just going to take certain things away for you from you, and then other guys have to make it happen. And, you know, their, their plan was just to not let Yoli catch the ball, and uh, then when they did, they doubled him, but but we had guys making shots to start that game. A lot of guys made three-point shots, and we got a nice lead, and then we were able to, to, to finish and, and win that game. But uh, the challenge on Saturday, there's, there's two challenges. One, obviously, the game, but there's a, it's a doubleheader. The women play before us, and so now you've got four teams with shoot-around times and trying to figure out you know, how you're going to squeeze all that in. And, and uh, so we'll, we'll deal with that when we get back here. Hopefully, I'll have a good practice on Friday in the Marriott Center and be ready to roll. Adding to it all is free bacon on Saturday night. We are told that the first 1,500 fans in attendance at the Marriott Center Saturday will receive free cooked bacon on the way into the building. And so, uh, yeah, so, so we're trying to get in the mood here tonight. Uh, oh, well, we've, got, we've got cooked bacon. We have cooked bacon, and we've got Jerem. Jerem eating our bacon. 
A's. Uh, thumbs so, up so, on. So you're kidding me. You're going to walk in the Marriott Center and take a piece of bacon? or the, Everyone gets strips of, well, the first 1,500 get apparently a couple strips of bacon on Saturday night. Mm, sounds, yeah. Sounds fun. Well, and, and, we're, and we're getting everyone in the mood for it here tonight. Uh, did you guys get bacon yeah. already? You guys already be, yes? Yeah. But, yeah, the bacon's been had? Okay. All right. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. All right. Uh, the BYU women's basketball team, Coach mentioned them, looking to snap a two-game losing streak. There'll be a Thursday. It's a matinee. It's a morning tip, actually, Thursday at the Marriott Center uh, with BYU and St. Mary's. You can watch it on BYU TV or the app. Again, an early tip time, 1 Eastern, 11 o'clock here in the Mountain Time Zone. Coming up next, a Q&A for Coach Rose as BYU basketball with Dave Rose continues right here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. And by Nissan, innovation that excites. Excited for the reboot. The teaser looks really good. Yes. So Sammy, are these yours? Mom, what are you doing here? Can a mom just drop in on her special snowflake? No, really, what are you doing here? I'm moving in with your sister to make sure you two eat healthy. We know how to feed ourselves. Mm, just like you know how to decorate. <laughs> Don't worry, I took care of that too. The girls are gonna love it. BYU Meal Plans, home cooking without mom. BYU Sports Camps provide youth with opportunities to build confidence, develop courage, learn sportsmanship, and make lifelong friends, all while improving the skills needed for their favorite sport. Athletes will benefit from learning directly from BYU coaches and players what it takes to compete at the highest levels. BYUsportscamps.com has all the information regarding dates, meals, recreation, housing, and other camp details. Get your athlete registered today by visiting BYUsportscamps.com. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. The one boy. It's our first football broadcast of the year. Join BYU Sports Nation for a two-hour football signing day special. Tomorrow, Spencer Linton and Jason Shepard will be in studio with coaches, players, and special guests and get even more coverage with Lawrence Lounge at the Marriott Center. Watch the two-hour special live at noon Eastern, 10 Mountain. It's new coaches, new hope, and new recruits on BYU Football Signing Day. Tomorrow, don't miss it. How do you spell Zach? Z-A-C. That's neat. Zach Celius, guard from Bountiful, Utah. LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Favorite movie, White Chicks. Bucket list, place to go, uh, Norway. Secret talent, uh, I'm the best at FIFA. Uh, which staff member sells game? Definitely Coach Rose. Biggest fear is snakes. Which superpower would I choose to have? Invisibility. Teammate I wouldn't mess with, probably Evan Troy. Favorite basketball player, Larry Bird. Most memorable basketball moment is winning state championship. Three points, count it. There you go. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was easy. Yeah, we, and we've seen a lot of uh, three points counted for Zach Selyus in his day. He's, um, you know, he's, he's having a great year. I think that, uh, um, you know, the, the like I, I just keep talking about, the, 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 I really believe the best is yet to come with this group. And, uh, you know, he's, he's had multiple games with multiple threes. And really that's kind of what he's become for us. He, he's, he's, uh, He's actually become a lot more uh, physical, I think, as he's feeling better. He's had some issues with uh, his back a little bit, but uh, I, really, I really like the confidence that he's playing with and what he's given to our team. In terms of top trios, uh, once they're all done, it'll be fun to add up the threes that uh, TJ and Nick and Zach will have had as teammates on this team. Yeah, and, and I, you know, I think that uh, when, you, when you go back and you look, there's, there's a, a, a little section in the game notes that talks about... Um, the quickest 
the, the guys who, who got to 100 threes, the, the quickest, fastest, yeah. you know, the fastest, and least amount of games. It's really interesting to look through that. I think Chase, Chase Fisher leads the group where I think he got it in 34, 35 games, something like that. Um, and the guys who you really think of, you think of Jimmer who – Shot so many threes and made so many threes. I mean, he's down there on the list. Took it took a while, took yeah. a while yeah. as far as games played for him to get 100. So. And by the and one of these days, we'll talk a bit about Chase Fisher, how because he only played two years here, he gets maybe overlooked. He's one of the, the purest, best shooters you're ever going to have in terms of lighting and, up from out there. And he played with, with Kyle Collinsworth, who was one of the most willing passers as a point guard that we ever had, and that combination was pretty lethal. Okay, some Q&A right now. Uh, we've got uh, Preston Rabin in studio at the mic for Coach Rose. Hey, Preston. Coach, quick question for you. Um, I know your job is to win ball games, and you're constantly out there looking for that player. When it comes to the boys that you see come and you see them perform and playing, what is the most important attribute that your new player can bring to the table that makes it so you really want him on your team? Well, that's a that's a great question, and it was a I, I, for a quick question. It's hard to give a quick answer, <laughs> uh, but. I would say I'm looking for great teammates. I'm looking for guys who are really skilled, really talented. They got great size, all those things. And, you know, good speed. Um, and but I'm looking for guys who can come into a group of guys and help make that group better. And um, it's it's not a scientific formula. You know, it's if you had a formula you could just plug in and. And then you knew this guy was going to make it. You, you, you spend a lot of time, and we, our assistant coaches are tremendous in locating guys. And, and but for me, I would say, you know, he immediately can come in and help the team on the court, but actually fit with the group and uh, and make the whole team better. Thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Uh, from social media at J A underscore Anderson three on Twitter, asking how can Nick Emery uh, be in a position to do what he did against LMU more often heading down the stretch. Well, it's, it's all confidence. I mean, I think that he knows that, uh, you know, he's been through, um, you know, his freshman and sophomore year. He had, he had a lot of big games, multiple threes. I think what he's given this team consistently for, you know, the 20 games or so that he's played is, um, is just, you know, the effort that he brings every game. And I think that that's, that's where he's really concentrated uh, his, his, his real contribution to the team. But, uh, you know, his ability to hit five threes in a game and not miss a three, I think, will not only give him a lot of confidence, but the guys he's playing with a lot of confidence. And, and hopefully that it's, uh, it's the start of something big to, you know, to come in the future. By the way, as someone who uh, deals with a lot of stats on my game-to-game -game prep, I was really impressed by the fact you pulled Nate Call and uh, Brock Zilstra out early. I read that, that today, really just kind of off a whim. So, uh, <laughs> That's good stuff. The kind of thing I'll put on my board for tomorrow yeah, okay. or Thursday night. Uh, Instagram gives us a question. Uh, how do you think that uh, Gavin Baxter's performance uh, helps Yoli Childs with regards to double teams? Well, you know, I actually had a long conversation today with Yoli about that. And, you know, he, he he's really um, excited about that you know that part of the game and Luke creates a lot of space for Yoli because he moves guys around and he he uh, he posts up but they don't they don't leave Luke and the, the thing is is that they're, they're they're leaving Gav and the fact that you know that he, that he can find him on a double team I just think it's uh, you know it, it'll it'll help everybody I, I think that the, the guards when they penetrate in there and they know that they've got a guy that is really confident behind the, the basket that can catch those things and finish I think it'll give everybody just a lot more confidence to to play a, a lot more uh, consistent on the offensive end okay. Facebook question you hinted at this earlier uh, from Ben Winters the crowd is typically really good in Portland but a lot of BYU fans what do they do for your team in those games well, I think over the years we've we've had great games up there. I think we had a one year we had a triple overtime game up there, with uh, almost a full house, and the majority of fans were, were BYU fans. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit, maybe it's, maybe it's because it's purple, but <laughs> reminds me a little bit of TCU in when we oh. played in the Mountain West Conference. Great turnout. And we'd go yeah. to Dallas and go to Fort Worth, and we'd have great turnout from, uh, you know, all our Texas, you know, Cougar Nation fans and. And we get the same kind of feel uh, up there. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it again. I mean, it's almost like we, we've created a, uh, you know, a, a, a one-time event for uh, those, those Portland. I, and I guess they get a full house when the Zags come in. Yeah. But we watch all their film, and we see everything that's going on. And, 
you know, the two best crowds are, I think, they're BYU crowds and the Gonzaga crowds. Yeah, the TCU reference, the purple and the, the dome roof, a yeah. couple, couple, similar feel there. Good stuff. All right, uh, folks, Wednesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio, you can get better acquainted with Cougars past and present on Behind the Mic, a weekly hour of Cougar conversations. Tomorrow night, my guests are Brandon Davies and football's Tasha Bell on that national signing day. It is Behind the Mic with Greg Rubel on BYU Radio, 8 Eastern, 6 o'clock here in the mountain. BYU team captain Luke Worthington joins the show next when BYU basketball with Dave Rose continues right here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. It's a big moment. Championship match. Fifth set, 14 to 15. Here's the serve. In their hearts, your kids have always been champions. It's only a matter of unlocking their potential. So give them a place to dream. A place where every day they can shape themselves into what they can become. A huge return. The star lays it down for a punishing kill. Champions start here. Sport Court. Have you ever heard the words Bitcoin, blockchain, cryptocurrency, or Bitcoin mining? Have you wondered what they mean? If so, you might need cryptication. Cryptication is an educational program that will teach you about different cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. You'll learn about the blockchain, the technology behind the coins. We'll show you the difference between a crypto exchange and a crypto wallet. We'll also give you tips on securing your crypto assets. Learn more at cryptocation.org. Let's go find some peeps. You mean pops? Do you like popping balloons? <laughs> Let's go spread some joy. It's almost our responsibility to help others. I look at it and I go, we've got the ability to create infinite amounts of money um, and what impact can we be doing with this? And I, I like to have impact on this earth. I have a purpose here and I need to see it through. BYU basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C and welcome in our first special guest tonight senior and team captain Luke Worthington coming on in Luke thanks for coming glad to be here so the, the easy thing to say about you, we've said it for a long time, is that you're from Wisconsin, but your hometown's become more, more complicated in the last couple of years because there's more to you than just Wisconsin now. Fill us in on that. Well, actually, since I graduated, so um, Wisconsin's where I grew up, but when I graduated, my parents moved down to Naples in Florida, um, and that's where they've been since. So it's become so, their new home. So what do, you, what, what do you consider to be like really the home of your heart? there where you played football and basketball or down at the new place home home is where the family is for me so i mean there's always a special connection to wisconsin but you know going back and seeing them is feels more like home to me and there's the fam so since you saw the football pictures uh how serious about the sport uh were you to the point where it maybe was maybe a college option for you too i loved it i love football still do um it's it's such a fun sport and um such a good team sport you learn so much in that game um so you know, I, I definitely considered it uh, early on. Uh, knew that I preferred basketball overall, uh, just the experience of it. So I was, I was wanting to pursue that if possible. It's just that those opportunities came a little later in my high school uh, you know, time. So anyway, I, I weighed out the football and basketball and ultimately decided with basketball. 
Coach Rose, you've often talked about how when you're on the recruiting trail, you'll see your guys play basketball, but you'll often run into them playing a different sport, and sometimes you see your guys play football. Yeah, Luke was one of the guys that uh, we got to go out and, uh, and watch uh, the whole football experience, <laughs> and it was big at your high school. My yeah. goodness, it, it was uh, tailgate parties and you know, brats being cooked everywhere, <laughs> and, uh, but it was, uh, it, was a, it was a great game. They won. I think, I think that year you might have gone undefeated. Would you lose one game that year? One game. One yeah. game, yeah. And uh, Luke carried the flag out, <laughs> stuck it in the ground, and, you know, it was – what number were you? 76. 76. 76 offensive tackle or guard or – Yeah, yeah. tackle and defensive end. Luke, you played two years of basketball here at BYU before deciding to take uh, two years off. Uh, when you came to BYU, was that timing always going to – was that the original timing or did really you decided once you got here? There really was no timing. I didn't know. Um, I came out to BYU and, and just really enjoyed uh, my experience here, was enjoying basketball, school, everything. And that was just kind of my plan. And um, fortunately, as I – you know, learn from others, um, family first, and then also teammates and people around me. Um, I, I knew that I wanted to kind of get outside myself, um, find an opportunity to uh, focus on others and, and serve others, and ultimately that's what helped me to make my decision to, to serve a mission. But it came gradually, and it came kind of from those around me. Coach, as, as someone who served a mission yourself, uh, what kind of feedback are you generally providing guys when they, when they come to you with that kind of timing decision? Well, it's, it's their choice. And I, I, I can remember, like it was yesterday, when Luke came in and told me, and I was just I was so happy for him because once, I mean, I think Luke's the only player in my career as the head coach here who played two years and then decided to serve a mission and then come back for his next two years. So... Um, you know, every guy finds, you know, that, um, you know, that, that opportunity for them when they feel it. And when he felt it, I was really happy for him, excited for him. Another decision that required a certain amount of feeling was uh, whether to get married or not. And that happened this past year. It did. That was the best year of my life. <laughs> yeah. who, do, so. who are we seeing here? I, I, I recognize you. Yeah. That's Sarah right there. So we met early, early last year, um, just the beginning of the year. And we were set up, actually. Um, and, you know, the ball just got rolling really quick and got married in August and have been married for a little over five months now. So it's been awesome. And we have her Absolutely in the audience incredible. tonight, do we not? Oh, yeah. There she is. Oh, awesome. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi. There you go. <laughs> how do you, thanks for coming, by the way, Sarah. Appreciate it. Uh, how do you describe your role on this year's team? S senior, captain, the whole thing? Um, you know, I, think, I don't think the role has changed too much for me. Ultimately, Throughout my time here, I've wanted to bring whatever I can to the floor to help the team win. Um, so whatever opportunity that is, minutes that is, position, um, I'm, just, I'm just out there to try and help our guys to get shots and feel comfortable in the offense and in the defense. Um, so being an effective communicator, um, trying to help guys to know uh, both where they should be and, and you know, talking them through different things is, is super important to the cohesiveness of our team. So I just try and do that as much as I can. Coach Rose, can you describe Luke as a student a little bit in terms of the academics and then uh, what he'll be doing for you moving forward after this year, too? Well, he's obviously, um, you know, great on the floor as far as his ability to, to get players to believe in him and, and get players to, to kind of do the right thing. I mean, he was, I think he's the only player that we've ever had that uh, in a captain's vote got every vote. And so, obviously, he reaches from obviously, to your, your most experienced players to your least experienced players, can recognize his ability to lead. Um, and then next year, he'll be uh, on our staff. He'll be a graduate assistant and um, be able to uh, kind of see the whole thing from another spot. I'm going to try to, to, to keep him in the, you know, the mode of being a, you know, an athletic administrator um, instead of maybe the coaching role. But he'll be a, he'd be a great coach if he wanted to do that. But I know that he's a, uh, hopefully we can get him to, in the ownership of the Milwaukee Bucks or something. There we go. <laughs> That's what we need. That'd be nice. Yeah. You know. yeah. what, are you, what are you doing scholastically next year, by the way? Do you already know what you'll be doing? Uh, yeah. So I've applied to the, the Masters of Public Administration program here, the Romney Institute. Um, so just awaiting that process of application and everything. And then um, you know, I'll, I'll go right into that in fall, just as if it was another another school year for me. So. And how is the school itself going for you in terms of the off the floor stuff? It's been good. Yeah. yeah. You just manage it best you can. You know, you're bouncing from on the road to in class to practice to meetings to whatever. You got a, You got a day full of stuff. But, you know, I 
I, along with my teammates, learn how to kind of manage your schedule and sleep as much as you can, really. Okay, so speaking of on the road, we are off. Uh, you're off to Portland for the game Thursday, Pacific on Saturday. Your thoughts on this, uh, on this weekend as we get down the back half of league play? Huge opportunity. Um, we've put ourselves in, in second place in the conference right now, and that's a big deal. Um, we want to solidify that throughout the rest of this year, um, and these are two games that we need to win. Uh, going on the road, no matter where you are, who you're playing is always, um, always tough. Uh, fortunately, we do have some fans out there that like to come out and support. Um, and then coming back to Pacific, another you know, great team that we need to beat so we can stay up there. We had to break. I'm not sure we're going get to get to see it again, but uh, uh, the running lay-in, you've, you, you've proved pretty adept at, uh, at collecting the ball on a full-speed sprint and still finding a way to score a couple times this year. Uh, kudos to you for those. Those are hard plays to make. Yeah, Nick kind of threw it out there, so I just had to go get it. And it was uh, just tried to do what I can to put it in the basket. So well, We was, are going to get Look at this. Yeah, that, 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 that's one version. I think, I think the, one, the one that we had this uh, past game is... That's the, one's uh, even better. There, right? there we go. There you go. Nicely done. Like a ballerina. Yeah. So light, <laughs> so light on my feet. The dexterity of an offensive lineman. Well, there it is. Uh, hang with us here, Luke. Appreciate it. Uh, Saturday, it is a BYU and Pacific a twofer. Uh, first, the ladies host uh, Pacific at 4 o'clock Eastern, then the men at uh, 9 Eastern, 2 Mountain on BYU TV and the app. Coming up next, BYU strength and conditioning coach Eric Short joins the program. Along with Luke and Coach, this is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. You're on BYU TV and BYU Radio. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetie. Check this out. Chicken wing. I love you. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. Well, I've done countless interviews with BYU coaches and players over the years. Find out where they were born and raised, the size of their families, their influences, and it gives me uh, greater not only appreciation, but even added interest and more investment in what they are doing. The more I find out about them, the more I care about them and their efforts and the things they've done and will do. And hopefully the listeners come out with that same appreciation and, and even feel more of an attachment to that player, that coach, and or his or her team. Adams. I'm Brian Adams. We created Dwight and Shining Armor. We're the writers and showrunners. We have a lot of titles. We have a few titles. Writers, <laughs> showrunners, creators. It's a fish out of water story, both for Greta and for Dwight. She's lost in his world, and he's lost in hers. Our intention was that there would be a little something for everybody. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, we hope you love it. We are back on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. On BYU TV and BYU Radio, presented in part by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. Our next guest on tonight's program is more concerned with the players' squats than their shots. He is third year strength and conditioning coach Eric Shork. Coach Shork coming on into Studio C. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Sir? Thanks for being with us, Eric. Thanks for having me. You bet. So you have spent a lot of your professional life in the Midwest. Can you kind of take us through where you've been? Well, um, it started in my undergrad. I started at uh, Springfield College, of course, the birthplace of basketball, and uh, used to walk through Naismith Circle all the time. <laughs> and then uh, from there, I went to grad school at uh, Western Michigan up in Kalamazoo, spent a couple years up there. And then from there... Uh, did a little bit of time in Buffalo with the Bills, and then um, then from the Bills I went to Ohio State, worked at Ohio State for about seven years, 
Um, then we went about 60 miles away to a small school called Wright State, which is in Dayton, Ohio. And then uh, for four years, I stayed there. And then I went to uh, St. Louis and uh, worked at St. Louis for nine years. Billikens? Yep, with yeah. the Billikens. And then uh, now I'm out here in Provo. So you mentioned Kalamazoo, Western Michigan. So famous Idaho Potato Bowl, BYU versus Western Michigan. That's right. How are you coming down on that one? Uh, Tim Lester. Well, Tim Lester was the quarterback when I was a GA out okay. there. So I kind of know him over Head time. Head coach of the course is Tim Lester, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. But, you know, I mean, uh, I'm wearing the Y, so you got to pull for <laughs> BYU. So uh, you, you, you've had a lot of basketball in your life, obviously, but you mentioned uh, the Bills, NFL. You mentioned uh, 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 Ohio State, where you probably had a, a little bit of hockey. Did you also have some NHL in your life at, at some point in the past, too? Yeah, well, uh, when I was at Ohio State, my primary sport there was hockey. And so I uh, worked, uh, worked a lot of hockey, and then the Columbus Blue Jackets came to town in 2000, and um, I was able to help them kind of get things wrong with their facility and, and, and um, did some work on their weight room in there, and it was interesting. How would you like working with hockey players, by the way? Oh, I love it. It's a, it's a hard group to break into, but, you know, <laughs> once, you, once, you, once they're on your side, they're like family. Who on the BYU basketball team would make the best hockey player? Best hockey player? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Why does TJ come to mind? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a Wayne Gretzky, TJ kind of a wiry Gretzky, guy. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, okay. Score, yeah. All right. Coach Rose, uh, what does uh, Coach Short bring to this program that you really, really appreciate? Well, you know, it, it, was, it was interesting how we, how we found uh, Coach Short. Uh, uh, you know, any time a job opens, you're, you're, you're looking for the, you know, the most experienced, skilled guy that you, that you can find. And um, we found Coach, you know, through... Uh, um, an old Ute. If you guys remember Alex Jensen, who played for Utah, that now is an assistant coach with the Jazz, that uh, you know he gave us a great recommendation because he was there at St. Louis with Coach Shork, uh, with Coach Majerus when uh, the late Coach Majerus when he was coaching at St. Louis, and so that's kind of what intrigued us. And then we started, you know, interviewing and, and brought him out and started talking to him and. And uh, it, it was pretty apparent straight off that he was the guy we needed. And I think that our, our players have all really benefited. Uh, but no one's benefited more than I have because he's a, a true professional and a guy who he, 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 he does his work. And, uh, and you can count on him every day to make sure the guys are, you know, in, in the condition that they need to be. And Luke, what makes Eric great at his job from your perspective? He brings uh, intensity. I mean, in the weight room, you got to you got to be focused. There's no slacking off in there. Um, you're lifting a lot of weight, running quite a bit. So um, you got to have a mentality when you get in there, and he brings it every day. And if we don't bring it, he makes sure that, that we're focused, um, gets us refocused. So, Because, um, yeah, the weight rooms can be an intimidating place, but when you got a good leader, you go in there and get your work done, get stronger. Eric, who's in your family that we'd like to talk about tonight? Um, my family is uh, my wife, Amy, and... Um, we have a son, Alex, and um, and they're both at home. Alex is doing schoolwork, and uh, Amy's Amy she works up at Utah for uh, the um, um, sports med up there. So, yeah. All right, good. That, that's our shout out for the family tonight. Yeah. They're a big part of what you do, certainly. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back more with uh, Luke and Eric. We'll tell you that BYU Sports Nation right now with Tiki Solano is your place for Cougar Sports with a social media twist. The latest episode dropped last night. Punxsutawney Phil didn't see his shadow on Groundhog Day, which means spring is coming. Is BYU football ready for a spring ball? Watch that on the BYU Sports Nation Facebook, IGTV, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. Coming up after the break, checking in on our Cougars and the Pros, and we spent three in the key. Stay with us. BYU basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. And by Nissan, innovation that excites. Wrapping up in a minky couture luxurious blanket. 
getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. And App Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. On the next Relator Brace. What do we do? We've never had anyone do this before. Ah, we're moving, Jerrica. I want a new Toyota. I want a what? Everyone is hearing strange noises. Did you shower this week? I don't know. You're the first people I've met from my mother's side. A close connection takes Michael to new heights. And Precious is one step closer to finding her father. I hope I get to meet him. Looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's? Try Smith's click list to order online and pick up curbside by the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Checking out our Cougars in the pros. We see, see Jimmer putting up uh, some customarily big numbers in China. Jonathan Tabernari still playing over there in Italy. We see Kyle Collinsworth and Tyler Hawes and Eric Mika all getting it done overseas. We see a picture of JT. Here's some uh, JT in action playing for Scafati in Italy. Doing what JT does. Making threes. Did that for BYU almost more than anybody else that's ever played here. Jonathan Tabernari. With that Italian passport, getting it done over there in uh, Italy. Coach Rose, what do you think, JT? Number 45 still, yeah. yeah. And he, uh, he's still making shots. Yeah. You know, he comes, he comes back and plays with the guys during the summer, and he, he runs from three, well, he doesn't really run. He kind of <laughs> trots from three-point line to three-point line, and uh, he does all his defense outside of the three-point line as long as <laughs> all of his scoring. But he, he can really shoot. You know, I mean, he and Brian Santiago are the two guys, I think, that... Uh, I see the most that still believe they're the best shooters that they've ever been put on the planet. You know, and, uh, <laughs> we'll tell you about it. But, J but JT, what, what, what a score he was for us. Indeed. A time now for a three in the key. Our viewers maybe know the drill by now. A player asks us three questions about himself, and then our panelists uh, try and answer the multiple choice questions. They do get multiple choice. And tonight we're going with uh, Gavin Baxter. Let's go to the monitor here. What's up, guys? Let's see how well you know me. Uh, question one is, who is my favorite superhero? All right, Gavin's favorite superhero. We give you four options. Uh, Supergirl, Batman, Wonder Woman, or Green Lantern. Uh, Coach Shork, you get the first run at this. Well, I'm going to go with uh, Wonder Woman. Hmm. Luke? I'm going to say Batman. Coach Rose? Yeah, I actually know it's Batman because he said that <laughs> when when we were talking about Aquaman, when we went to see uh, it. He was, he was the guesser at yeah, that time. Yeah, All right, let's yeah. get confirmation from Gavin then. The answer is Batman. Oh, yeah, uh, there you go. Okay, yeah. inside knowledge. All right, uh, next question from Gavin. <coughs> question number two, who is my favorite music artist? Hmm, favorite musical performer. Your options are Gordon Lightfoot. The weekend, Kanye West or Yellow Card? These are all legitimate acts, uh, Coach Shork. I listened to a little Gordon Lightfoot coming in today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not thinking that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with uh, Kane West. Kanye West from Kane uh, Coach Shork. By the way, as a Canadian, I do appreciate Kanye. the Gordon Lightfoot. That's good stuff. Uh, Luke? I'm going to say The weekend. Coach Rose? It's got to be something that most people have never heard of before. Um, you sticking with Luke? I'll go with Luke. Okay, all right, let's see what Gavin says here. The answer is the weekend. Oh. All right, okay. Luke's got his thumb on the pulse there. Uh, question number three from Gavin Baxter. 
<laughs> Question number three, what is my favorite TV show? Okay, we have four options for you. Uh, they are Burn Notice, New Girl, which is always an option here on the show, uh, The Office, or Breaking Bad. Coach Short, one more time. Let's go shoot for the offer here. I'll say, uh, <laughs> new girl. It's always a good selection, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Luke. I'm stuck. The Office, maybe? Coach Rose? I'm going to go with... We all, we all know of New Girl, The Office, and Breaking Bad. But I think he will go with Burn Notice. He's going left field Burn here for the idea. sweep, yeah. Coach Rose. Let's see from Gap. Might be right. The answer is burn notice. Oh! <laughs> See, it's not so much what you know about your guy as what you know of how he answers questions. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's kind of like taking tests in school. Yeah. You know? It's a good tactic. Uh, yeah. Social media question for Luke. I think we have time for a question for Luke. Uh, Ashton H. on Twitter. Is this right? Uh, what's the toughest workout that Coach Shork has given you? Oh, gosh. Mm. Um, the toughest for me is always conditioning. I can lift weight with the best of them, but it's the conditioning that kills me. So it's probably the <laughs> treadmill circuit that we have to do. It's yeah. like 25, 30 minutes long, and it just seems like it never ends. You're just running and running, and then there's another running, and then another running <laughs> segment. So it's pretty bad. You feel okay giving that to him? Yeah, he's good. He handles it pretty well. <laughs> All right. Coach Short, oh, you know what? We have time for one more question. It's going to go to you. Uh, Coach Short from at Noah Thompson 72 on Twitter. Uh, what player would most likely skip leg day? <laughs> oh, just <Jashir. laughs> For sure. That came pretty quick. Jashir. All right. Yeah. Coach Short, thanks for coming in tonight. Thanks, Luke, good to see you again. <laughs> thanks for bringing Sarah. Coach Rose, appreciate it. He'll be with us for closing comments coming up next. As we head to break, you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. We're closing it up next here on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Living at Trio is not about retirement, it's about fun. It was so different from everything we'd been taught to expect about senior living. I was delighted when we came and they had these raised gardens. Just love it here. I wish more people knew about Trio. Learn more at btrio.com. In the timeline of life, you make choices every day. Like buying your first car, what a beaut. Or serving your mission, you come home and hop right into college. And then that magic day comes, marriage. Getting married is incredible and pricey. But you know what? Children are even pricier. Your family grows and you need that first home. No matter where you are in the timeline of life, Deseret First Credit Union is right there with you. DFCU, your values, your timeline, your financial future. It's our first football broadcast of the year. Join BYU Sports Nation for a two-hour football signing day special. Tomorrow, Spencer Linton and Jason Shepard will be in studio with coaches, players, and special guests and get even more coverage with Lawrence Lounge at the Marriott Center. Watch the two-hour special live at noon Eastern, 10 Mountain. It's new coaches, new hope, and new recruits on BYU football signing day. Tomorrow, don't miss it. Everybody enjoys a little prank from time to time. Add a little magic to the prank, and things get even more interesting. What? That is insane. This season, I'm teaming up with families to prank siblings, friends, parents, and their kids. What? You're on TV right now. I'm Eric LeClaire, and it's time for a little mischief. This is why you brought me here? Uh... <laughs> All right, so welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here on BYU TV and BYU Radio, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Here once again is our broadcast schedule for this week. A couple of uh, teams start with letter P this weekend. We're going to Portland and having Pacific here in town. The uh, game against Portland up at the Child Center late night, 11 o'clock Eastern. It'll be on ESPN2. Listen to the broadcast with uh, Terry Nashif joining me on BYU Radio. And then Mark Durant joins me for the game on Saturday uh, back with Pacific in town, BYU and the Tigers. That'll be a 7 o'clock Eastern and a 9 o'clock Mountain Time tip. So, and by the way, 
Coach Rose, uh, a very enthused and energized crowd here tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, we got the American Fork High School representative, Sky Ridge High School, and uh, just a good, enthusiastic Cougar fans. You're all invited back next yeah, week, by the way. This has been really good. Uh, really quick, we got about 45 seconds left. Uh, Portland, they're looking for their first league win. And do you, I mean, how do you view that fact alone right there? Well, the fact that uh, sometimes you, you wonder where the coach is with the group, if, they, if he's got them or he's lost them, and the fact that they played an overtime game at Santa Clara, uh, you know, and, and, and Portland came back in the last minute to hit some shots and got it to overtime, and then Santa Clara beat them. You know that, you know, they're still playing for their guys. They're playing for each other. They're playing for the coach, so that's what we'll, that'll be a challenge. Okay, good luck in the opener Thursday. We'll see you back here in town on Saturday. Have a great weekend. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. All right, that is Coach Dave Rose. To request seats here in Studio C for next week's show, go to byucougars.com slash roadshow. We'll talk to you next Tuesday for the coach and Eric Short and Luke Worthington. I'm Greg Rubel. This is the BYU Basketball with Dave Rose on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Go Cougs! Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, sunshine.